Hello, uh, welcome everybody. Welcome back to this, that is our fifth webinar uh, done by the 5G Common project. The project is uh, almost uh, close to the end. Today, we want to uh, give a brief overview of all that has been done by the project. And then we will uh, really focus uh, on the role that the small medium enterprise had in our one project. So, uh, there will be me providing this introduction to the main topics and objective of the project. And uh, uh, I am Roberto Fantini from uh, TIM, uh, the uh, telecom mobile operator in Italy. But today I will be here also with uh, uh, two of uh, my colleagues from the project. Uh, Maurizio uh, will uh, provide you with his uh, uh, knowledge about the different funding opportunities uh, that uh, European project like IGCAM and can offer to small medium enterprises. And uh, Orestis uh, from Excellence uh, will uh, share his experience as uh, one of the small medium enterprise partners uh, of the project itself. So I hope that uh, uh, having, now having uh, reached the fifth webinar, you are now uh, somehow familiar with uh, our project. Uh, 5G Carmen is uh, one of uh, the European Horizon 2020 uh, funded uh, project. Uh, it's a pretty large project involving uh, 25 different partners from uh, uh, 10 European countries. Uh, the project started uh, in November 2018. It was originally uh, thought to, to last for 26 months. But due to the COVID issues, uh, we had to uh, extend the project. Uh, and so it will uh, close uh, uh, at the end of this month, at the end of July. So we are really at the, running the last mile here. The, the focus is the, of the project is uh, to uh, show the benefit of 5G and how 5G can help automated driving uh, uh, use cases in a real world uh, condition. Really, the, what we have to show is uh, uh, to show use cases that are run on uh, pilots on the actual highways uh, on our road, and in particular in the very important Bologna to Munich corridor, a uh, highway that stretch through Italy, Austria, and Germany, connecting uh, uh, two of the most important industrial uh, poles uh, in Europe. The, really, the focus was not only showing that 5G is a very important enabler for autonomous driving, but also show that it can work also in the very challenging scenario of uh, uh, crossing countries and national borders. Uh, as you probably know, when you change a country, you, you usually have to switch from one network operator to another. That takes some time. And also the quality of services when you are in roaming, it's not the same that you have uh, in your national borders. So uh, here uh, the focus was to show that also with this very challenging from a network point of view conditions, uh, the system, uh, thanks to the advance uh, offered by FAG, can work and can push autonomous driving up to level four. Um, the, we have different partners involved in the project, obviously mobile operators like Team, Magenta, Deutsche Telekom. We have uh, um, car manufacturers, uh, Stellantis, BMW. We have uh, telecommunication uh, uh, vendors of equipment like Nokia, Qualcomm, uh, NEC, to name a few. But we also have a lot of, uh, uh, we have a research center like FBK or uh, uh, University of Valencia and so on. Um, but we also have different small medium enterprises to, to be able to analyze the very challenging use case that we had in mind. We needed the help of uh, companies with very different expertise. And uh, we found that also on uh, some small medium enterprises that provided some key elements to the project. The, you might have uh, heard about us in the past. It's almost a year and a half that uh, we do this kind of presentation. Uh, originally, you may have earned us speaking about these four use cases. Uh, these were the candidate use cases from the pilots. Uh, 
uh, then uh, we had basically one use case about cooperative maneuvering, uh, showing how 5G can assist in this kind of maneuvers. We had uh, one use case about situation awareness, using 5G to extend the perception of vehicles, uh, of the surrounding of vehicles. We had uh, a use case dedicated to infotainment and in particular in improving the video streamings also when crossing the border and uh, one uh, dedicated to green driving. So you showing how 5G can be used to collect information from vehicles uh, and the environment uh, to get suggestion on uh, more sustainable uh, uh, driving, uh, driving behaviors. The, all these use cases have been studied at the end, at the beginning of the project. Uh, some of them have been already retired in the early phase, like green driving. But then uh, in the final part of the project, the 5G Commission asked us uh, to focus on those that were more challenging from the 5G point of view. And so we selected the first two and we merged them in two new scenarios where cooperative maneuvering and situation awareness work together to support uh, cooperative driving. Uh, these uh, new use cases that uh, have been obtained, we have uh, differentiated them in uh, cooperative and automated lane change maneuver and cooperative and automated in-lane maneuver. So we have differ differentiated them on the type of maneuvers that we needed to do. In a cooperative lane and automated lane change maneuver, uh, we have shown that uh, exploiting vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to network communication and uh, using the uh, knowledge that can be, you can be gained of the environment through the 5G network, it is possible to help cars uh, doing uh, challenging maneuvers like lane change. Here we see, for example, the red car that needs to change, enter the other lane. And so through the communication offered by 5G technologies and V2V uh, technologies, uh, it can uh, coordinate its maneuver with the other vehicle. So asking, uh, for, exa for example, the blue vehicle in the back to slow down and the blue vehicle that is ahead to speed up so that they can create a gap and uh, so that the red car can safely change lane and merge uh, the, the, the lane that is occupied by the other vehicles. Uh, in lane maneuvers, uh, here the idea is a little bit different. The idea is that we aimed to be able to keep level four automation. So uh, being able to have the car that it drives itself also in an uh, unpredictable situation, like the presence of a queue that cannot be detected di directly by the vehicle uh, itself, but that can be uh, detected by other connected vehicles, so that the red car can be informed in advance that, for example, there's a queue in the exit lane and it can abort the exiting, uh, the, the, the maneuver to exit the lane and it will keep its lane because there is a queue there. Or, for example, maybe the, uh, the red car wants to uh, overtake and change lane, uh, but maybe there's an um, emergency vehicle coming from behind. And so through the 5G network, the emergency vehicle can inform all the vehicle that it needs a free lane to pass. And uh, so that uh, all cars will keep their lane and will not occupy the uh, overtake lane. This use case, uh, needed some technological, technological enablers to be demonstrated. Obviously, we needed to have 5G deployments. Those were, have been provided, uh, at the, particularly at the border from Italy and Austria and Austria and Germany by network operator. But to be able to um, support these uh, scenarios in cross border, we needed also to deploy some advanced, advanced features that 5G uh, enables. Uh, to really reduce the gap in communication when you change a network operator and to reduce latency also when you're in road. Latency is a very important KPI for, uh, uh, for autonomous driving use cases. And in order to keep latency low, we have deployed the service on the 5G network exploiting edge computing platforms. These are basically servers that are deployed in such a way that they are close from a logical point of view to the service on the, on the highway. Uh, this computing platform uh, have been deployed in Italy, in Austria, in Germany, and uh, to support service continuity, we needed 
to connect them and deploy also an orchestration platform that handles the service continuity and uh, that uh, moves the service context from Italy to Austria, where, for example, when we change uh, country. This, is, this was also probably the play, really the playground for uh, our small medium enterprises because uh, on this edge platform, we have uh, hosted services and functionalities, for example, about security that have been deployed by all the different partners of the project, including in particular small medium enterprises. Besides that, we needed also some uh, additional technologies for like message brokering, it's a technique that allows to send messages to cars in a georeferenced way so that only cars that are really interested, that are physically in a position where the message is important, get informed of what is going on. We needed precise positioning. It's a technique that allows to use 5G network to send correction information that enables to improve the quality of, the, of GPS localization. And with that, we have shown that we are able to reach a positioning precision of less than 20 centimeters. And we had predictive QoS, that is a feature that allows to uh, predict network condition in advance so that services can be adapted to respond, for example, to network congestions or uh, lack of coverage in certain areas. All of this has been deployed and put in place. Um, and uh, we started the trialing uh, uh, in the first phase in, uh, inside the country borders. So uh, in Italy and in Germany, in uh, near close to Trento and uh, close to Munich, respectively. But then we moved to the cross border that was really the target of our project. In particularly in Brennero uh, between Italy and Austria and in Kufstein between Austria and Germany. Uh, and uh, we have deployed everything that was needed to set up the use cases, uh, all completed all the integration and functional tests of all the, the functionality that, uh, that are needed by the use cases. And then, uh, since we are basically at the end of the project, we were able to demonstrate our use cases. We have done some demonstration and we are now basically closing the project by collecting KPIs and evaluating the use cases at the border. Uh, everything will be collected and uh, uh, reported in the final deliverables that are due by the end of this month. The demonstration, by the way, has been also done in public. Uh, we have, uh, um, we've done an event at the end of uh, June, the, on the 22nd of June, uh, showing the use case uh, on the live uh, uh, network uh, using uh, the highway at the borders. And um, it received a very good coverage by media. We are really pleased with the result. Everything went uh, smoothly and uh, we were really able to show that the use case uh, can be run uh, in a real environment with commercial networks, by the way. So using, not using prototypes, uh, but uh, of for the network part, but using the commercial network that the network operator provide. And obviously then prototypes for uh, the services that are on the back. Uh, so I hope I got your uh, interest. And uh, if, you are, uh, if you want to know more about our project, uh, you can uh, uh, follow us uh, on our social, me social medias. Uh, we have Twitter, LinkedIn. We have a website where we collect everything and that we are now populating with all the last results. So, Please uh, uh, take your time to go there. You can also subscribe to our newsletter. There will be a final one that will be sent after the summer to summarize all that we've done. Uh, so please uh, um, don't be shy, uh, join us. It will be good to hear from you. And with that said, as I said, is uh, we've had uh, um, a, a big role was played by small medium enterprises. And this is true in general for all European projects. There are a lot of funding opportunities for uh, small medium enterprise. So uh, I leave here the floor to Maurizio Cecchi that can uh, uh, give you some hints on how to access these funds. Okay, thanks uh, a lot, Roberto, for introduction. Hello to everybody. My name is Maurizio Cecchi. I work in a research institute that is devoted to technology transfer. So how to exploit at best uh, 
results from innovation and research project with a specific focus uh, on SMEs. So I will go in uh, this short presentation and as said by Roberto, just to give uh, a very short overview of uh, uh, the uh, research programs of the European Commission. Please, next slide. And uh, uh, as you know, in, uh, we are in the heart of uh, the uh, seven-year program that is called Horizon Europe. So it is the part uh, of the European funding devoted to research, where SMEs uh, can go directly to request for funding. Then I will go a little deeper in the specific uh, uh, program for smart network and services that is very close uh, to the one uh, uh, where uh, 5G Carmen belongs. So for that is now uh, promoting and funding similar initiative and then going in a few practical suggestions really on how to get uh, in this kind of arena. Please, next slide. Of course, uh, this is, uh, we start with Horizon Europe. Please, next slide. And uh, uh, Horizon Europe is a very complex animal, has uh, different parts, but uh, we don't have, of course, time to explain uh, any part. Mainly, there are three pillars, one devoted to open science, but this is more for academics or public research uh, part. There is a pillar three on innovation on the ground, but now we will focus in pillar two, that is the one devoted to digital industries, say industries in general, where there is a specific part that we saw, I would say the largest part for digital technologies. Of course, in parallel, there are other uh, programs on energy, climate, food, but of course now we focus uh, on the digital part, the digital programs uh, for industrial competitiveness in Europe. Please, next slide. The amount of funding uh, is huge. Of course, here we are talking about uh, seven years um, and 28 countries, but uh, as you see, the uh, on the overall budget of 100 billion euros we uh, the part that we are tackling we are talking about the global challenge and the industrial competitiveness takes uh, a little more than half so there is a huge amount of resource there of course it's difficult to get them uh, let's see how we can help you on this please next slide. next slide so we go now in something that is more close to the environment of 5G garment or similar project. Here, there is a specific smart network and service program that belongs to Horizon Europe, where the Commission is putting a lot of funds on different kinds of initiative. The first one is more an evolution of 5G toward the future. So on the development of 6G, so something very close uh, to the continuation of 5G Carmen. Then there is a second line called Stream B that is really revolutionary. Perhaps this is a little more on uh, for a pure research center because uh, the commission is asking for radical technology advancement. And uh, of course, here, I guess uh, that only SMEs coming from uh, university has been off, uh, may be interested. Here, really, there is the part of the program uh, devoted to long-term vision, radical innovation. Then the third uh, stream is uh, stream uh, C, that is uh, how uh, the different industries and institutes in Europe uh, can uh, offer experimental infrastructure. Of course, for instance, also 5G Carmen was a, a, an experimental infrastructure that, of course, that can be used by any kind of initiative, other project in the, the program of people interested from outside. But then uh, I would like to focus more on the fourth one because is a part on large scale trials and pilots like 5G Carmen. Here, the aim is to explore and demonstrate technologies 
in uh, real world. And uh, here, of course, use cases uh, are the most important. And usually the very uh, best people, I mean, that can offer innovative use case, new idea, new idea creative any ideas are small and medium enterprises. Please, next slide. Here you can see just uh, how is the dimension of this uh, program. For instance, in the first uh, call that uh, was launched uh, with the deadline of last April, there were 20, uh, 240 million euros, so just only for one call of tender. Here you can see, uh, I mean, how much uh, it was a distribution of money in these different categories, uh, because uh, we are talking about uh, the Stream D, so the initiative for uh, use cases and field trials, uh, for instance, in the very first beginning, there were 50 millions. That is uh, usually around what uh, the Commission is putting for this kind of project. It is very um, likely that next April there will be a second call, and uh, this part for field, trust, uh, field trials uh, will be expanded. So uh, you can see that. Uh, the amount of money is large. In this case, as 5G Carmen, because you have to go in different countries, um, doing a lot of co uh, cooperation and collaboration among uh, university, industry, small and medium enterprise, usually the consortium, so the group that is presenting the project is very large, around 20, 25 partners. So at the end, uh, every time you can expect from three to five large projects uh, funded by each uh, call. Please, next slide. So what uh, this stream, so this part of the program is asking. Uh, so is uh, the aim, of course, is to demonstrate both the technological part and the business validation, because, of course, uh, we, we don't uh, develop the technology only for the sake of saying uh, we are nice, uh, they are nice uh, and interesting, but of course, uh, they should have uh, an impact uh, on the market, so in terms of business. So this project should demonstrate also the business value. Then, uh, uh, of course, uh, this kind of large consortium are created to foster close uh, collaboration between uh, ICT uh, technology provider, but uh, application owner, users. So in, in this term, uh, is interesting both for SMEs that offer specific uh, technologies, but or are also interesting for uh, uh, small enterprises uh, that simply would like uh, to sell their application and put in, in uh, test a new innovative idea. Uh, so. Of course, uh, these projects are part of the large uh, smart network and service program, so can rely on the platform. We mentioned, for instance, uh, the technology platform uh, of Stream, D, uh, Stream C on other facilities. So if you enter in this kind of project, uh, you can rely to a lot uh, of uh, facilities and infrastructure of, uh, already available. Then, of course, you have to explore and demonstrate technology device and your application. And, uh, of course, in terms of leadership of Europe, of course, in this kind of uh, program, because our research program, you have to, to show that it's something that is useful for the technological leadership of uh, Europe. And uh, in a very explicit way, SMEs uh, are expected to, to play a key role in this process. This is specifically written in the call, but is uh, implicit in the kind of work you are doing because application, I mean, innovative application usually are coming from them. Please, the next slide. So, for SMEs, of course, they can demonstrate uh, their validation, force their collaboration, and so on. Please, next slide. Sorry, next slide. And uh, so how can be done? Of course, 
you have uh, to be successful here, have in mind uh, that uh, you uh, should propose uh, new ideas, not, not something that is on the market, something uh, that is new, that is interesting for, let's say, short future. Here we are not talking about uh, visionary technology for 10 years. Here we are talking something that in two, three years can become uh, a value for the market. Then, of course, uh, we are talking about uh, smart networks. As you know, 5G, I mean, started his deployment, uh, uh, not fully, some uh, uh, specific, specificity of uh, the 5G should be uh, also put on the market uh, in a very short term. A lot of people are talking already 6G, but uh, in essence, uh, you have to propose uh, use case and application where network performance uh, is essential. Of course, here we are talking about 5G, 6G, smart networks. So the network performance uh, is uh, essential. So how to do? The, as you know, the commission is very transparent, so it's very easy to find uh, previous uh, successful pro projects like 5G Carmen and many other. There is a specific uh, uh, platform called, named Cordis. Here is uh, the link where you go. And here is very, very detailed. So if, you, for instance, you are inter interested in autonomous driving, you will go there and you see all the previous projects, successful projects on autonomous driving, so using 5G or network advancement for autonomous driving. You will find not only 5G Carmen, but others. There are at the present six large projects on 5G for autonomous driving. So you can go there and find uh, who are the people, who are the proposer, so you can send to them uh, your ideas uh, trying uh, to enter in the future initiative. And then, uh, of course, uh, you have to be aware of uh, where are the opportunities, so where they are the most appropriate call. Also here, the commission is very uh, uh, transparent. Uh, here is the link, uh, and of course, uh, you can uh, click uh, directly there, and you can find uh, uh, divided by category types, uh, kind of interest of anybody, uh, all the call. As I mentioned before, is very, very likely for the new, I mean, uh, launch of new project. Uh, this will be done uh, next April. Now, in this time frame, uh, there is uh, the evaluation process of what uh, has been uh, sent uh, on uh, last April. The Commission will, uh, uh, I mean, of course, uh, select uh, the best one. But in next April, there will be a second uh, part. And of course, my suggestion is uh, to go and see the statistic of previous call. Also here, these uh, numbers, uh, figures are published. So you can see where you can be more, more successful. For instance, in certain cases, you can see there is a huge amount of competing proposals. So perhaps it's not worth to go there. But in, in the other part, of, like, for instance, the stream D, I mean, there are not so many proposals ongoing. So a, a good new idea may be successful. Please, the next slide. Then uh, there is uh, something uh, that is uh, a little less known by people around uh, that uh, we are talking before about uh, the public call of the commission, how we structure, but then uh, inside each project, uh, many in, in many cases, especially for large, uh, large projects, uh, there are project uh, open calls. So it doesn't mean uh, that the project so future project like 5G Carmen, publish open call, have a certain amount of money that we'll see later. And so that you can go directly to the people of the project to propose a call. So you're sure that the project is already selected because it's running, the money is there. You have simply to convince through these open procedures that your idea is good. And it's much easier in this case because it's not a, a generic participation of a large consortium. In this call, uh, there is a request 
of something very specific, for instance, innovative use case. And so you have to go there, propose it and do it. No, no need to have co statement, administrative process, legal process, simply do the work and it's much faster. Usually in this type of activity, it lasts only less than one year that compared to the three years uh, that we are talking before, like, uh, or three and a half, like 5G Carmen is much easier uh, and usable by the SMEs. Please, next slide. This is the usual, uh, let's say, uh, process. Uh, there is a, a submission period of around 60 days, uh, so some time for evaluation. The maximum is five, but usually in two months, uh, this is done. And then uh, there is the process uh, that is very similar to the normal European project uh, process. Please, last next slide. So, what does it mean in terms of money? For instance, in the call that I mentioned before, that will launch in April, in April, there are around 24 million euros for this kind of open call from. Uh, six initiative, the successful initiative. So um, 5 million euros coming from the three project dealing with a testing platform. But even there, you can propose use case. At around 20 million coming from the project of StreamD, the one where I focused before, from large field trials. So what does it mean? That is. Uh, around 80 new use cases that will be accepted. And uh, the amount uh, for this one year work is 250,000 euros. That is not bad in a very easy way. So lump sum, no cost statement, no administrative burden. So because uh, it's not so easy in Europe to find uh, for each call 80 new interesting use cases, uh, for sure you have uh, uh, to work. Please, next slide. These are the links that you can uh, uh, go for all this kind of information. So on mission, strategic roadmaps, budget, uh, all these uh, are hyperlinks. So you can go there, key documents, uh, the description of the work program that I mentioned before, all the information about funding and, ten and tender opportunities, uh, then, as you know, there are national contact points for each country where you can go for questions and, of course, uh, frequently asked questions. Please, next slide. This is, uh, these are the link uh, for the Smart Network and Service Program. So the brokerage platform for newcomers uh, is this. So here, Yule is not very rich. You can go there and launch some ideas, my personal feeling uh, that not many people are using this platform, but you can try, is where proposer people interested can go there. And, uh, the, and, and, to, and of course, uh, you may start collaboration, but uh, as I said before, it's much better if you go on the previous successful project uh, and propose uh, the idea of people that were successful before. Next slide, that of course is the ending one. So then I will be, of course, uh, ready for answer. Thank you for the attention and I leave back the floor to the studio. Thank you, Maurizio. Uh, thanks a lot for this uh, insightful presentation. Um, we can now uh, leave the floor to Orestes. Orestes is one of our uh, colleagues in the, uh, the European project. Uh, Orestes Mavopoulos, he, he, he works in excellence. Uh, it's, uh, and he will uh, uh, share a little bit his experience inside the project and uh, inside the small medium enterprise. Thank you, Orestes. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Roberto. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about our experience as an SME uh, cybersecurity and SME uh, in acquiring funding and then moving forward to uh, getting more business opportunities and how we leverage our existing participation in EU research projects. Uh, can, ah, thank you. Uh, let's go to the next slide. 
Thank you. Uh, now, the agenda structure, I will speak a little bit about the company, uh, our role in 5G Carmen, and then we're going to have a discussion about the business benefits of participation in research and innovation projects, some challenges that you face as a cybersecurity SME in reaching the market, and some tips and in insights on how you can maximize your business impact from research projects. And then we will have a Q&A session. Now, Excellence was um, actually driven by uh, a research-based company, so we started from academia. Uh, most of our experts in Cyberlands uh, have an academic background. Uh, a lot of them have an, an academic and an industrial background. And the company was founded in 2015. Uh, our portfolio is uh, around vulnerability assessment, cybersecurity detection and classification of uh, threats and threat response and recovery. Now, uh, what we have here is the journey of the company, and I think it's pretty important to give you an idea about the time frame of uh, uh, cybersecurity SME. So, when we founded the company in London in 2015, it was almost two years until uh, we managed to get uh, our first funding from uh, a European Horizon project. Uh, after a few years, we opened uh, another office in the Netherlands. And uh, we actually published our non-personal solution in 2017. And around 2020, we started um, with uh, our cybersecurity solution. Uh, we tried to ready it for the market. And now in 2022, uh, we are the company as excellence. And this is our trade name. Uh, can we go to the next slide? Now, uh, we have a, uh, it's very important when you are a, a cybersecurity SME to have a clear mission uh, that it's quite um, simple and clear to either partners or uh, stakeholders that you try to approach. And at Cyberlands, uh, we aim to have innovative and simple solutions that are focused around the cybersecurity and privacy. And a lot of this expertise came out by, from our participations in EU projects. Um, next slide, please. Um, now we have uh, different areas of uh, specialization. A big part of our portfolio is around telecommunications and energy applications. We also have some expertise in automotive, and we are also participating in several projects providing cybersecurity solution in healthcare. So we have a pretty um, a pretty diverse area of expertise that covers the different industrial and research domains. Next sector. Uh, next slide, please. And now we, in, in Excellence, we also provide a solution uh, which is called Retina, and it's our uh, service and product. It's a cyber, uh, cyber physical uh, cyber security tool which is aimed to protect the industrial applications. Uh, and the aim of this tool is to maximize production uptime uh, of uh, uh, industrial application and then ensure that there is business continuity. So the idea of this tool is to make it simple to use, but also detect threats uh, that uh, evade existing cybersecurity tools, which is uh, a major selling point for our tool. And we, it notifies when the production is disturbed by cyber-related incidents. Uh, next slide, please. Now, in, uh, in 5G Carmen, we are participating as a technology provider and we lead tasks and activities related to cybersecurity. Now, the main contributions of, um, in the projects are around cybersecurity analysis and threat assessment. And we also provide several software applications that ensure the secure operations of 5G assets in the project. Uh, next slide. Um, now let's talk a little bit about what it is, uh, how it feels like to be an SME and trying to establish yourself in the market. And this is um, a pretty similar roadmap, I think, that several SMEs will try to follow. So the first point is you identify market need or a gap. Uh, based on that, you try to secure funding. Uh, then you try to develop a cybersecurity service to cover that market need. The next step is to actually secure more funding to make the, your solution better. And then you have to go to market and hopefully you reach to the point of uh, getting some profit. Now, today in the talk, we're going to focus on uh, the market aspects. Uh, now, what are some of the benefits of participating in research and innovation projects? 
A major benefit is that you can subsidize your development goals. So you can get funding from research innovation goals and you can uh, use those money to cover a lot of the development goals. You can also cover equipment uh, and uh, all license, software licenses and several other things that you need to, to develop your service. Uh, another major benefit is that you gain uh, a very big exposure to several industries, academia, and also how research applications uh, grow and move forward and then mature. Uh, essentially, it increases, uh, increases your engagement with the industry and the public. And this is a major benefit because as an SME, when you start, uh, when you start your company and your journey, it's very difficult to approach big industrial partners and uh, try to work with them to develop several solutions. And But with a recent innovation project, this is something that is part of the project. So you can get in touch with them. You have uh, several work packages that you collaborate with them to develop solution. And it's also a very safe place in order to have open discussions about what their needs are and how you can better leverage those needs to improve your products and services. And this leads us to our next point that through those contacts and through that exposure, uh, you can refine a lot about how, what your specific market needs is and how you can move your product or service to, to a direction that will um, cover the needs of the market. Uh, another important benefit is that you can also gain uh, very valid references and a lot of industrial experience. And it's this is critical uh, in order to, to reach the market because uh, if you have developed a solution, a lot of people, when you try to sell that, product to them or you try to come into a collaboration they will ask i mean has this applied uh, has this been applied in a real life situation uh, who did you work with to develop the solution and through recent innovation project this is something that you can really answer and uh, all those a lot of those research products give you a very good and solid base uh, that you can approach people that you want to to collaborate with or stakeholders that you need to uh, further like your your product or service uh, next slide. Uh, however, there are some challenges, especially if you are a, a newly funded SME on reaching the market. And the main one is how you differentiate yourself from the competition. Uh, now, for example, cybersecurity as, as, as a domain is very broad. It has a lot of application and a lot of uh, different niches, let's say. Uh, but it's also dominated by big players. So if you develop a solution and you try to uh, penetrate the market, uh, a lot of people will ask you, why shouldn't I use your solution, which I don't really know how well it goes, and I don't use a solution by Microsoft or from Cloudflare, uh, any of the big hitters out there. And usually the thing is that with cybersecurity, there is a very deep need for customizable services in almost any application domain because those big players usually have very broad solutions, but uh, they don't perfectly fit the, the requirements or the needs of several stakeholders. And this is a very nice way for, for an SME to uh, get a very nice, uh, let's say, foothold in the market. And this is very nice because as an SME, you are usually m more flexible and um, to address bespoke and specific needs that a client may, may have. Uh, and one of the, the issues that you have, in, especially in the beginning, is that you don't have a very clear narrative of your product or, or service. Um, so it's very difficult to approach someone and tell him that, that he should use your product, especially because you are very new and you haven't really worked out all the bugs yet. And this is one of another main challenge that you have when you first start. Uh, another another issue, usually when you have uh, several projects that you're working on, research projects, is that the research objectives that for, for those particular projects may not completely align with the needs of the market. Um, but you can also turn this thing into a strength because a lot of the research objectives are refined during the project's life cycle. So in the beginning, when the project started like three years ago, the research objectives were um, were uh, from one specific version but as the project evolves those chains then can be refined and if you have identified several needs from the market uh, this is actually an excellent certification on why you should change the research objective so you can actually turn this thing into a strength um, 
Now, uh, another issue is that uh, several of the R&D projects, um, as mentioned before from Mauricio, have a long si uh, life cycle and sometimes they might get delayed or some of the activities may be pushed uh, towards the end. And that may stress internal resources when you are SME because you have a little, uh, limited amount of people and uh, person months that you can deploy to that project. And this is uh, something that will affect the timing of you reaching the market. Uh, next slide. Now, uh, some of the tips to help you maximize the impact, especially from R&D project is that you can use the dissemination activities that are part from the, of the project to gain insights from the market. And you can also present your research outcome in a very safe environment. And the feedback you get is very helpful into refining your mission, your narrative, uh, maybe your stake, your, the, the stakeholders that you try to approach. And essentially, it's a way to get uh, feedback that you can improve not only your market activities, but also the, your company branding, uh, the narrative, how you structure all your, your social media presence. And this is very helpful to do when you are establishing, trying to establish an SME. Uh, and another major benefit is that because um, from all those other employees you get exposure from the uh, industry, you can also uh, try to turn this, uh, let's say, research uh, partnerships into business partnerships uh, with the partners that you've uh, participated in all the research consortia. And another, another important thing is that you can also analyze the competition uh, uh, or the, the future partnerships that you might face because a lot of those research consortia uh, after a while you get in touch with uh, a lot of the players that are in the same domain so it's very easy to exchange expertise uh, discuss uh, several let's say services and how you try to reach your market and it's a very uh, nice and beneficial environment to uh, be an SME in uh, next slide thank you uh, that was the end of my presentation, so thank you. If you want to find out more about the company, and the first link is our website. And if you want to get in touch, I have a list of emails with uh, all the people involved in the company. Now, thank you for your time, and uh, I think we are ready to take some questions from, from the audience. Thanks a lot, Orestes. It was uh, really interesting. Thanks for sharing uh, uh, your expertise, uh, your view. Uh, as we have seen, uh, it's um, obviously this kind of funding is a very big opportunity, not only for the funding themselves, but really for the kind of uh, uh, context and um, when uh, you get the opportunity to be in and for the kind of uh, input that you can receive from this kind of, ex of experience. And I really appreciate the, the tips that you have given because yes, it's a very big opportunity, but it's important to have this kind of uh, uh, feedback to help other SMEs uh, to really get the most out of this, uh, this kind of opportunity. So uh, I don't think we have any comments or question coming now from, the, from our socials. Anyway, uh, uh, the, this webinar has been recorded and will be left available in our social platform for the future. Uh, so if uh, someone views this, uh, not now, but maybe in the future, uh, don't, uh, be, don't be worried to ask questions, put comments. Uh, we have also left all our contacts here. So we will be glad to, to keep in touch and uh, receive questions and answer them also in the future. Then uh, thanks a lot for uh, for your time. Uh, thanks uh, Maurizio Restis uh, for uh, your presentation. Uh, I think that's all from today. And uh, you thank time. you to you, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Thank you for your time.